Welcome back for another video. I'm Ehabad, a free-to-play and game player in Raid Shadow Legends. We are back on the challenge account. I think this is, what, episode 28, I believe? Could be 27, could be 28, who knows anymore? In any case, it's Razzlevarg fusion time. We did, in the last video, I showed the summons last weekend uh, for the summon rush. Obviously, we got a copy of the epic. And so far, I have seven copies of the rare. Um, in this video, initially, let's jump into the photos. Update from the previous, well, <laughs> the video before last, up until now, give a, a full context of what the account's gone through. And then we're going to do a little bit of the fusion live in the video itself. So into the photos. The first thing I wanted to share was actually something I missed in the previous video. This is back in the 14th of April. I actually bought the Deacon Soul and gave him cruelty. Now we are catching back up with where we should be, which is the 17th of April, so at the beginning of this week. Uh, just showing the inconsistent one key on Brutal. I don't always get it. I do sometimes. It's a little bit RNG dependent, but I'm hoping once we get the new fusion, we build out the new clan boss team, we should be pushing much uh, better numbers. Ideally, really, we want to be doing Ultra Nightmare and Nightmare. So we're going to show the entire fusion itself. Here was Dragon done. Uh, I actually did more points than required, but mostly because I had extra energy at the time, needed to do the Dungeon Divers. And I really wanted to get some good gear from Dragon. Getting the 150 energy return by finishing ninth seemed like a good thing to do as well. So that's kind of how I balanced uh, the Dragon itself. Also, to be honest, at the time I wasn't 100% decided whether I'd do the fusion or not. I only decided on the Monday that I definitely would. And obviously the Dragon was already finished by then. So I, I was going to do it anyway, fusion or not. Dungeon Divers 1, I also did complete. Like I said, managed to uh, get much more than was required, which is not something I, I would commonly do or, or tip, definitely wouldn't advise doing. It just happened to coincide with the fact that I had a lot of extra energy and uh, I went and used it in an opportune moment because we had the champion training plus the dragon, both of which I wanted to do quite extensively uh, to progress the account. I did end up getting the Ancient Shard there at 39.50, just, I think I got it by like 10 extra points or something, so I just made sure that I got that. The champion training, you can see I ultimately got the rare. I didn't really, I don't think I pushed any further, to be honest. I don't think I went for either the Ancient or, or the Epic Tome. Instead, saving back any further rank ups and leveling um, for, well, the, the champion training that's now ongoing this weekend. Arena also done. I didn't end up, uh, I don't think I ended up finishing in a points, uh, in, in like a top 10 or top 8 position to get energy or, or gems. But obviously, if you are in a position to do so, I'd highly advise uh, getting any return that you can, particularly those gems to energy. So anything between fourth and eighth. Artifact enhancement event, I literally just got the champion and then stopped there. I'm quite silver starved, so I don't really want to be wasting silver to, to get the epic tome. It's quite a lot of additional silver. If I had more headroom, then I probably would be going for the epic tome, but because I'm pretty low on silver, and we have three artifact enhancements during this fusion, plus all the silver in terms of actually fusing individual champions, etc. I I don't I don't want to waste any silver uh, because you know you just could find yourself in an awkward situation that's easily avoided by being careful uh, ahead of time. In terms of the potions, this is also back on the 17th. I did have a quick little look through my potions to see where I was. I'm a little bit light on the large green and on the large arcane. So spirit and arcane, I do need to get a little bit more of. And my intention is 
after the champion training's finished this weekend, so essentially next week, I will dip in to the keeps to uh, to top up whatever's required. Equally here, this is still on the 17th of April, I changed the Cold Heart build into a Destroy build. Uh, I needed to put a champion into Destroy to try and beat Scarab, and uh, for me Cold Heart's the best candidate for that because you get uh, a really big hit on the A3 which is also the TM control. A lot of people do put Armager into it but personally it's not as uh, impactful because unless you have a lot of TM control you're going to be struggling to get Armager to use his A2 very often uh, without risking Scarab taking a turn whereas Cold Heart you always want her to be using her A3 anyway so it's a uh, it's more efficient that way. I also find it easier to build Cold Heart because she only needs 70% crit rate, whereas Armaga re relies on having 100%. So, you know, it, overall, it's easier to build Cold Heart and destroy if you have her. I also had to tweak my Armaga build. He was just too slow and didn't have enough accuracy. Both of these builds weren't done in the uh, optimizer. I just built them manually uh, quite quickly. Um, and just, yeah, nah, that was it really. The weekly arena chest, again, the equipped gear itself was pretty poor, but we get another ancient shard and another 70 gems. We're over 8,000 gems, so I do expect to have to use some during this CVC, uh, sorry, during this fusion, and then I also anticipate using quite a number during the PR CVC that starts on Tuesday, uh, partly to get masteries on champions and also to get uh, CBC points. So I will be using them, uh, but we do have a, a large stockpile. So we're relatively comfortable. Um, you know, it shouldn't be too, too stressful to, to get the fusion done as a consequence. So yeah, here's on the now the 18th. And I think the last thing I showed you guys was that I was working towards beating, um, what do you call it, Clan Boss, getting the 100 million uh, on Clan Boss to, to get Arbiter. And uh, it was all dependent on, on the two keys that I would have that next morning, whether I'd need to buy a key or not. And I had a really decent key um, as the, the first one. So I only had 21 and a half million uh, left to do to avoid buying um, buying a, an extra clan boss key to get the 100 million. But unfortunately, it didn't happen with the clan boss key um, simply because I took my eye off the fifth key. Uh, I, I was basically replying to um, a post, a YouTube comment, took my eye off the run, and we fell less than a million short. Uh, I, I prefer not doing the cheese, but uh, I probably would have done the cheese and, and reclaimed the key and reran it to save the 100 gems because we were so so close but uh like i said i unfortunately took my eye, eye off the uh the screen off or the eye off the prize whatever you want to call it and uh we wasted the 100 gems but we did get it done so there you go uh arbiter is ready to be claimed and we will actually be claiming her in this video i saved the uh, claiming of Arbiter for this weekend. We've got the champion chase during the fusion. So we will get a decent number of points, actually 650 for avoid legendary. We'll get a good number of points from claiming Arbiter and uh, also fusing three of the uh, fusion epics for another 750. That gets us to 1300. Sadly, the goal is 2500. Uh, I was kind of hoping that it would be more the 2k, you know, 2050 mark. But uh, they've made it a bit more demanding. So it is 2,500. How we'll do the other, you know, 1,200 required points. I think we can have a look and decide what the uh, the best path to do so is. But uh, we'll do that later in the video. In any way, there were the six keys that it took. Obviously, overkilled by, uh, by 18 million. Uh, you know, it is what it is. On the 18th, I uh, did get at least 
<laughs> 10 gems back for my, my troubles and an ancient shard. I also bought the weekly tag team energy and uh, just, you know, used that straight in the fusion. And then on the 19th, I went and did some high elves. We've now got this Skaramis kind of built out. Ended up using Skaramis to farm Ice Golem, even at level 50, just giving me that decrease attack was massive. So actually managed to progress quite a bit in high elf as a result, using him as a carry. So stage seven, three starred. Then I went and three starred stage eight, stage nine, stage 10, stage 11. And that was that. <laughs> I did also on the 19th consider should I do the cheese and hold back the Dark Aethel for an extra 250 points. But I decided uh, that would be too cheesy uh, for me. I generally prefer not using any kind of uh, cheesy strats like this. So I didn't do it. And now that it's 2,500 points, I'm maybe a little bit regretting not doing it. But yeah, it is what it is. We'll find a way. Here is the Ice Golem done. Did manage to get the uh, few... The, sorry, I did manage to get the Epic Tome in the end as well. Uh, there weren't really any other events that, that needed my attention. And I thought it was worth the extra investment to get that Epic Tome. I've got a lot of Epics that I'd quite like to book out. So any Tome I can get my hands on, I'm going to go for. Also on the 19th, we got another Ancient Shard from Clan Boss and then went and did some more uh, Faction War High Elf once we've got the additional six keys, managed to three-star stage 12. Uh, but that was that was the end of it. And then on the 20th of April, got another Ancient Shard from Clan Boss. Uh, we also got 200 extra energy as by way of compensation. I'm not entirely sure what it was in relation to, but... I was happy to get the 200 energy. And I was back trying Scarab. I had tried it a couple of times on um, on the day that I rebuilt Cold Heart uh, and, and Armiga, and I couldn't get it to work. Uh, but I wasn't really looking that closely. I just was like letting it run, noticed it failed, and I couldn't really figure out why because I felt I had enough turn meter control but it just wasn't working. And then I was had a couple of really busy evenings. I was out uh, for dinner one of the nights as well. And it was only on the 20th uh, that I actually had time to really sit down, do the run. Uh, actually, I did it on my, on my train commute home, did the run manually and figured out that it was because I had lasting gifts on miscreated monster. Essentially, his shield wasn't always replacing the shield across the entire team so sometimes i wouldn't get the extension effectively i wouldn't replace the shield so if say armiga or cold heart who are both running a little bit slower or even elf guard if they had two turns remaining on the shield previously so if they'd got a four turn shield and had been lapped by miscreated monsters such that they had two turns remaining then when when miscreated would do his uh, A2 to give new shields. If it was a smaller overall shield because he low rolled the damage, it wouldn't replace the existing shield. So they'd actually run out of their shields and then the boss would take a turn and it would all fall apart. So I actually had to reset the masteries on miscreated monster and get rid of lasting gifts and that then enabled me to be able to beat Scarab, but as you can see here, with uh, less than 1% health remaining, we got an unlucky resist and, uh, and it failed. But uh, I reran it and, uh, and got it done. So yeah, I was pretty pretty happy to manage to beat Scarab 30 uh, using this level 40 elf guard. Who was the main difficulty there was keeping her alive uh, until the boss, to be honest. But um, yeah, no, it worked. And I think I think it could work on Scarab 50 as well. But I think the top end of Scarab, uh, I think, will, will struggle to keep uh, the Elf Guard alive to even get to the boss. We don't quite have enough overall control in the team to be able to carry a very low level uh, like that in, in the higher, higher difficulties. 
Then also we went and did some Dark Elf, uh, managed to get a one star on stage 11, uh, went back and three starred stage 10. Uh, that was that was that for Dark Elves. <laughs> I then also did go and beat uh, Frost Spider as well, which I actually have a, a pretty strong team for Frost Spider, uh, you know, between Cronum and Rogni. To be honest, Deacon didn't do a lot. Ronda was okay. Jamasa actually died quite easily and ended up just being two-man between Cronum and Brogni. But I think with some better builds overall and adding Doom Priest in for that continuous kind of cleanse and heal top-up, I think we're probably not that far off having a team that's capable of beating Frostbite 120. But whether we have the gear to do so, uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not sure we're quite there yet. But uh, to be honest, the difficulty would be getting to, to 120 uh, more than actually beating it. Uh, some of the some of the waves are very, very difficult. And I think we'd struggle with some of the higher level bosses other than, uh, than Frostbiter. But definitely Rotation 1 is our best bet to actually clear Hard Doom Tower. I, uh, as you can see yesterday, also uh, on, on Live Arena, I had a, um, I, well, I, I ended up doing a fight because I hadn't done it for the whole week. <laughs> it was like, oh, if you don't do a fight, you're going to gonna lose five points a day from inactivity. And uh, to be honest, the same thing was on my main as well. I just haven't been playing Live Arena. It, the times that they have the window open... I only realistically have the ability to play the game during one of those windows. And during the week, usually I'm catching up on the dailies or, or at the moment on the fusion as well. And I don't want to spend my entire free time playing the game either. And I'm running two accounts. So, you know, Live Arena is just being completely skipped, to be honest, on my side. Uh, I know a lot of people are having good fun with it. And if I hadn't spent so much time doing a lot of tag team over the last year, maybe I'd be more more excited by it. But I'm a little bit burnt out on on the arena side of things, uh, whilst particularly whilst I, I'm running two accounts uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, here we go with the Ice Golem tournament. Actually, you can see not only did I get the epic tome in the end, but somehow I actually finished first. I didn't even realize that I was in a shot for finishing first, but I did. So an extra Ancient Shard and uh, and some Six Star Relentless, all of which, unfortunately, <laughs> was awful, uh, continuing to accrue just some of the worst Relentless <laughs> on this account. It's really been cursed on the, on the Relentless side. Had quite a lot of sets of Six Star Relentless now, and they, they I can't even really put together one usable set still. But, um, you know, if we get loads and loads of Chaos or we can re-roll it all. <laughs> so <laughs> there's always that. Then the Spider Tournament we had midweek, which was kind of random, uh, was restricted to specific factions. I did, in the end, just like maybe an hour before the end of the tournament, I went and ran two times uh, because I saw the points were extremely low and there was an opportunity to get some bonus energy. Um, if it had been any more, I wouldn't have bothered. But for two runs, it felt worthwhile, just. And then this was also yesterday. Time to use some energy. Got a lot to do this weekend with the Dungeon Divers, the Fire Knight and the Champion Training. So those kind of gifts they'd been giving us uh, in terms of like these, these energy bonanzas I can't actually remember precisely what they were for. I think at least one of them was um, for watching the video that they had uploaded on YouTube. Once the community got enough views, we got in-game rewards. So yeah, I definitely you know made use of that and went and uh, and used the energy in Fire Knight. And as we can see here, I did run it overnight. It's quite a slow run, but I was quite happy to see that. 59 wins out of 59 attempts. So that's not too bad at all. I'll definitely take that. Um, yeah, so 100% on, on the Fire Knight. 
I, I'm really chuffed to be honest. Um, I didn't necessarily think it would be, so I didn't actually run super raids, uh, even though I had queued up quite a lot of energy. I decided if it wasn't 100%, I would probably get a better energy efficiency by not running super raids. I know in the extremely long term, it will even out to be the same. But in a, a smaller sample size, in theory, it should be more energy efficient not to use super raids. That said, it is 100%. So today I have been running super raids. I then went and tried to progress on the Doom Tower so we could get to Scarab 50 today. And to be honest, these Doom Tower waves are getting so hard. I think I really need one more reliable crowd controller. And I know we've been talking about uh, upgrading Scaramis to, to 6-star. He was actually destined to be my next 6-star before we... Um, before we pulled shards last weekend. And obviously we've got a few more champions coming from that. We also have Arbiter to claim. And then I thought actually probably Arbiter will be my next six star. But now on reflection, given that I have all dungeons at 20 on farm, uh, Arbiter really the main progress I think she's going to give me is is in, in arena, to be honest. Uh, as a consequence, I'm actually thinking Scaramis is probably still the better choice. I feel like he'll be really strong within Hydra, which is an area where I do struggle still. And I think if I could gear him out to be a Mischief Tank and Decay Provoker, then we could be in a, in a good position there. Also has a decreased attack to help out with Wrath. So I think, you know, could fill a number of roles on Hydra. And the pairing with Cronum and Scramis would be really strong. And I could probably make Arbiter work, at least in the short run, as a level 50. So probably what I'll do is upgrade Scramis to 6-star, try and use him to progress a little bit further in Doom Tower before we get the reset, uh, and also use him in Hydra, and it will help a lot with Doom Tower you know, in the, in the next rotation as well for, for wave control. Uh, and then we'll probably have to rank up to six star Razzle Varg and the Fusion Epic, get the Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss team sorted, and then it will be Arbiter. So it could end up being that Arbiter is now, <laughs> from earlier this week when I was like, she's going to be my next six star, to potentially being my fourth in queue to be six starred, which is a. Uh, Quite a fall from grace for my first Void Legendary. <laughs> but, you know, we just got to work out where we're going to get the uh, the best uh, progression we can. In any case, uh, today also Clan Boss Chess got an Epic Tome and an Ancient Shard. And that is all the photos taken care of. So whilst we're here, we might as well fuse one of these... Um, these epics, get that done. That will get us 300,000 silver spent, but it will get us um, a second copy of the epic and 250 champion chase points. We can then jump in, collect the arbiter, that's 650 champion chase points. Now, hopefully, we can also get a little bit of progress going along here. That's going to take some time. Uh, we can probably be able to do that. I think I have a silver key left over. So I'll probably just go and jump into here. To ten glyphs, just any old glyphs. That's not too bad. Let's just find any gear that's equipped that doesn't have glyphs. Uh, yeah, we'll do this banner. And we'll just use one star glyphs as we have quite a lot of them. We've been doing faction wars for a while. So we just need to use 10 of these. One last glyph there. Progress mission done. That's an extra 50 gems and an extra ancient shard. Now we can go and do this. That will do it as a super raid. Just get it, get it over and done with. Let's click auto. Yeah, so Essentially, I also have the 
Ultima L. Hain. So I might end up summoning Ultima L. Hain in addition. Uh, so if we do the three epics at 750, the Arbiter's 650, that gets us to 1300. If I do Ultima L. Hain, that gets me to 2050. And then I'd need 450 additional points from a combination of Mystery Shards and Farming Brutal 12-3. And that kind of feels pretty pretty attainable and achievable to me. So with the event points, we can just carry on as we do this champion training. We will actually get the 10,000 points right there. So that's pretty good overall. And we'll be in a position to keep progressing. I mean, like... Are we going to get to Roman 2? Doubtful. But can we uh, continue to progress and get some of these rewards along the way that will help us out? There's Sacred Shard, you know, there's Legendary Books. Sure, you know, there's stuff that we can do along here. You know, we can we can do all the stuff up until the Stage 25s, for instance. And there's resources along the way. Uh, void Shards, Energy, Gems, Chickens. Yeah, all all worth getting. Uh, as best we can, you know. Absolutely no reason not to. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for this video, to be honest. I think I'm just going to carry on, carry on going, get claim all this energy, use it, reinvest it. Um, I think I've got something from the tag team. What have I got here? Uh, 50 gems. Oh, just, just missed out on the 75 annoying i was actually out running when tag team finished so i got sniped this time but you know sometimes you have to say real life has to come first you can't always put the game first but yeah we got eight and a half thousand gems i think i will end up uh using some gems this weekend so i'm actually going to do is whilst we're on the phone well i say the phone whilst i'm i'm recording this video let's just buy a bunch of refills uh, and then we can keep an eye on on how many so I'll just buy five for now I think I bought five didn't I no I bought six okay we'll make it ten let's just go and buy ten I, I think I'm gonna need quite a lot to be honest uh, over this weekend because it's a bit of a crunch and I had said in the in the guide the fusion guide that I uh, this weekend was a bit of an energy crunch Kind of frustrating that we don't have the energy in in the clan shop which means i'm gonna have to use gems instead but even using 400 gems it's not really going to be a problem we still have uh still have over 8,000, so we're in a good place we just need to keep on going in terms of shards like i said we have got one sacred back uh, and sacred and avoid came from the monthly reset of the quests building up a decent number of ancient shards again and have a healthy supply of mystery shards. And then on the fragment summon, we obviously have have the Elhane available. I do think we'll probably end up using her, but we don't have to do that just yet. It's only Saturday today. I think grind on, finish Fire Knight, uh, and then put as much work into the champion training as possible and see at that point where we are it's essentially got to be the plan at this point you know we've got to see how many points we get from farming 12-3 and pulling mystery shards to determine whether we need to use the ultimate elhane or not i expect that we will but there's no point pulling now when we we don't have you know perfect visibility anyway that's it that's that's, that's definitely the end of this video <laughs> I've rambled on for over half an hour. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you've seen what I'm doing and where I'm going. Um, and maybe if I do a video tomorrow, which which I definitely intend on doing it, maybe it will be with the Skiramis. Actually, let's let's uh, let's rank him up right now. We have, uh, in fact, we've got five five star chickens as well. So we have enough for for two six stars. But the other uh, six stars are going to be uh, Razzlevarg. Uh, and obviously then the fusion epic so i kind of want to be in a position that i can six star those pretty quickly so for now scramis goes to six star i'll just put some levels into him not too many because i don't want to use too many brews 
probably about 15 will be good. That gets him to level 35, gets the, the base stats to something reasonable. And now I'm thinking with him in play, that might get me past level 45 because I've been unable to do it with this setup. Um, now who I drop, probably, probably the miscreated. Let's see. Not sure if the build is good enough, to be honest. I think we might need to rebuild him. But uh, let's just jump in and we'll have a little look. It's basically really frustrating um, set of champions. We've got two champions that act as cleansers. And then you've got three debuffers and buff stealers. Like, it's just it's horrendous all over. And I feel like you need multiple levels of control. Probably to the point where I actually should drop Chronum for the miscreated and just go for maximum control across across all of them. That's probably the better approach. Like I said, I do think I need to rebuild. Um I do need to rebuild Skaramis to make him actually viable to be able to to compete in this level of Doom Tower. He's got a very budget build at the moment, not in not in particularly good gear. We're actually getting a few resists as well, which is definitely a problem because then we're going to lose all of our all of our healthy buffs. Um yeah, so leave that with me. I'll hopefully get around to rebuilding him later today and give this give this a go and see if we can actually get to Scarab. I think I can beat Scarab 50 with the same team that I beat Scarab 30. I think they're fast enough to make it work, hopefully. But, uh, you know, <laughs> if we get there, that's, uh, that's the problem. Anyway, that's it. That's definitely it. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.